Hi everyone, my name is Andeswa, a UCT medical student. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you, thank you so much for watching one of my videos once again. And if you're here for the second time or the third time, but you still haven't subscribed, please do the right thing and subscribe. And if you're new here, welcome. I hope you do stay and become a part of my journey as I become Dr. Andy. On this channel, I post medical school vlogs and study tips and productivity videos. So if you are interested in any of that, please be sure to click the subscribe button. So this is one of the most requested videos. I am going to be sharing with you how to make a revision timetable for your upcoming exams. By the end of the video, you'll be able to accurately identify and prioritize what to study and actually know how to plan your study timetable. So this video is going to be divided into five sections. Number one, I'm going to share with you how to choose what to study. Number two, I am going to show you how to make a weekly timetable if your exams are weeks away or how to make daily timetable if your exams are a couple of days away. And number three, I'm going to be sharing with you how to do as many past papers as you can. Number four, how to manage your time and make sure that you are productive throughout the period. And number five, I'm going to be sharing with you a very, very useful study technique that will improve your concentration and attention span. So please do make sure that you do not skip any part and you watch up until the end of the video. So firstly, you want to classify your subjects or courses according to your understanding or performance. So I'm going to use my high school subjects as an example. So the ones that are highlighted in green are the ones that I'm good at and I just need revision. The ones that are highlighted in orange are the ones that I am performing average in and most of the topics need revisiting. And the ones that are highlighted in red are the ones that I'm poorly performing in and I need to actually go back and study. Secondly, you want to classify your subject according to your exam dates. So you will divide your exams into three sections. The first sections are the exams that you're going to write earlier. The second sections are the exams that you're going to write in the middle. And the third section are the exams you're going to write last. For example, if you are writing 15 exams, the first five exams is going to be section one, the second five exams are going to be section two, and the last five are going to be section three. So you are going to use the two, three, one method of revision when you are creating your weekly study timetable. Meaning that on week one, you are going to be revising section two papers or rather section two subjects. And week two, you're going to be revising section three papers. And week three, you're going to be revising section one subjects. So that towards the day of your exams or close to your exams, you are revising subjects that you are writing first. Firstly, what you want to do on your timetable is highlight all of your responsibilities. Either it is school, classes, work, chores, errands, all the stuff that you cannot get rid of or you really have to do. So here you can see that I've highlighted all of my classes in purple and I've highlighted all of my errands in orange and I've highlighted all of my chores in green. And then the blank spaces, that is the space that you're going to use to fit in your study time. So for my week one, I am going to be studying only physical sciences, maths and English, because those are the three subjects that I am writing in the middle. Those are my section two subjects. How do I know how many times do I study each subject or how much time do I spend on each subject? It's simple go back to your ranking or how you prioritize your subjects. So the subjects that are highlighted in red are going to get the most attention, meaning those are the ones that should appear the most on your timetable. The ones that are highlighted in orange are the ones that are going to be moderate or average 
appearance on your timetable and the ones that are highlighted in green are going to get the least appearance so when you look at your timetable you have you have to see more red less orange and a very few green as you can see on my example english is the one subject that is highlighted in red because i feel like i am performing poorly in which means i am going to be studying english almost every day and life sciences for example i perform average in which means i'm going to study it every other second day here on my timetable i'm studying it on monday wednesday friday and sunday so the subjects that i am performing good in such as maths i'm going to study it less frequently at least three times a week because i just need revision also note that on my timetable there's a yellow highlight that is hobbies so on the yellow highlighted parts you can put the stuff that you like to do or the stuff that keeps you distracted while you're trying to study so that studying doesn't feel like a punishment if you're going to be studying while you're thinking about tiktok why not put 10 minutes aside for tiktok so that when you are studying you are completely focused so when you are revising your subjects i like to divide them into three and again there is a three two one method meaning that the one that is highlighted in red you're going to spend three hours on the one that is highlighted in orange you're going to spend two hours on and the ones that are highlighted in green you just going to spend an hour so if you are finding geometry difficult for an example you are going to spend the first two hours basically learning the concept and the last hour is definitely for past papers so this is how you want to organize your papers or topics that you have done so you're going to arrange them according to the years that the paper is from and the topics from there you are going to do a question from each year and then after that you're going to mark yourself put your marks there and then write down any mistakes that you made also do corrections so when you are doing your past papers make sure that you record down everything that you do the year the paper is from and the subtopics make sure that you do this for all of your subjects so for example trigonometry is highlighted in orange meaning i'm going to spend two hours on trigonometry the first hour is me revisiting all the concepts that i haven't understood well and the last hour is for a past paper and then i'm going to record down which past paper did i do from which year how many marks did i get and what are my weakest points and did i do corrections or not also if you got low marks for that topic you need to indicate what exactly made you to get low marks so this is how your timetable should be looking like in a day this is an example of a monday timetable as you can see from 7 a.m to 2 p.m these are the classes make sure that you include time for lunch time for extracurriculum activities such as watching tv and make sure that you include time for traveling if you do travel from school or from work to home so that things don't overlap as you can see geometry has three hours to it because it was highlighted in red the first two hours is for studying and the one hour is for question papers equations because they were highlighted in green they will get only one hour which means you just head straight to doing past papers and life sciences was highlighted in orange which means it will get two hours so you pick any topic and then you're gonna study it for two hours one hour one hour revision and then one hour past papers make sure that you put time for dinner and social media as well if you need to and number two you want to make sure that you do not leave any gaps on your timetable don't say that oh, i'm just leaving this three hours i'm gonna see what i'm gonna do because you are allowing distractions or you are allowing procrastinations to take over because on that three hours you're gonna be like oh, i'm just gonna take a nap or you're gonna end up spending time on tiktok on that three hours so make sure that for each hour 
you assign an activity even if it's like TikTok. make sure that each and every hour is assigned to something so that you do not lose track of time and you know actually where my time went or where do i spend most of my time another thing is that when you are studying make sure that you turn off all of your notifications and put your phone away so that you do not find yourself spending time on other stuff during the time you are meant to study so if you are struggling with concentrating and you can't study for a long period of time or you can't be productive i am going to be sharing with you this study technique that can help you to study and improve your concentration span it is called the promodoro technique so what you want to do is break your study times in chunks in small chunks meaning that you can study for 25 minutes and then take a 5 to 10 minute break or i prefer 45 minutes and then the last 15 minutes of that hour i am taking a break and that's if you have a longer attention span but if you really really find it hard to concentrate do 25 minutes and then take 5 to 10 minutes breaks after you've done four promodoros which means four times of 25 minutes studying and the breaks you can then take a longer break which is like 20 to 30 minutes but if you are doing the 45 minutes and 15 minutes break you can then take an hour break in that break you can go eat while watching tv or you can go for a jog whatever you prefer to do i suggest that you stand up from your study desk and go somewhere else during your break so that your mind is refreshed do not take a break where you are studying after creating your weekly timetables or your daily timetables you want to leave at least two to three days before your exam so that you focus only on that exam those two to three days and you focus only on that paper if you are writing life sciences paper one make sure that you focus only on paper one and number two instead of doing past papers in sections or in subtopics make sure that you sit down and do the full paper and mark yourself after doing the full paper and give yourself a mark and it is during this time where you go back and revisit your record where you were recording down all the past papers that you've done there you want to see your common mistakes you want to see all the topics that you were lacking whether you've covered them and also you want to make sure that all of your difficult topics or your difficult questions you go through them so that you make sure that you understood them and decrease the chance of you failing them again in your exam so we've come to the end of the video if you found the video very useful please click the like button and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so and if you have any questions please type them down below i'll be happy to answer any questions other than that thank you for watching i'll see you guys on my next video bye